Starcraft universe is a violent one. There was an entire 2000 year period called the Warring States period where everybody just fought. There has been thousands of tiny conflicts between nations in four great ninja wars. And each of these conflicts results in the deaths of tens of thousands of shinobi. But now in the current Boruto timeline, we're in an era of peace. Or are we? The problem with villages built entirely around their military is that if you stop fighting, well, all the soldiers are gonna be kind of confused on what they need to do with the rest of their lives. And this is a reoccurring theme in both Naruto and Boruto. But today, fortunately for both you and me, by and large, we're not really talking about Boruto. What we are talking about, however, is the fifth great shinobi world war. Yeah, you heard that right. Number five. You didn't know what happened, did you? Well, that's what I'm here to do, enlighten you about these things. But before I get to shedding light on anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And I know you guys love listening to me talk about Naruto, but if you guys wanna hear me talk about other anime that aren't Naruto, and I mean quite literally any other anime that's not Naruto, guys, please follow my brand new YouTube page, The Weeb Commander. If it hits 50K by the end of the year, I'm getting a tattoo that says, I heart Sasuke anywhere in my body, that's not my face. And while you're out there following other pages associated with moi, guys, go ahead and follow NC Gamer 23 where instead of talking anime, I play video games in Hammer's Collection, where instead of talking anime while sitting in this chair, I do it while I build these massive statues, which, mind you, I have the biggest ever statue we've ever received. It weighs 95 pounds, and I'm unboxing it this Sunday. But before we get into all that, guys, today we have to talk about a brand new sponsor to the page, Dragon City. Dragon City is a free mobile game that allows you to collect thousands of different dragons to build your own empire. And when I say thousands of dragons, I mean thousands of different dragons. In fact, you can select two different dragons, have them breed, and create a new kind of dragon for your empire's army. But just hatching these dragons isn't going to be enough. You're going to need to feed them, to evolve them. You're going to have to train them for various different kinds of PvP PvP modes. Yeah, that's right. If you built up a dragon army that you're proud enough of, you can go into PvP to fight other dragon masters. But we're not just talking about Dragon City because it's one of the hottest and best mobile games out there right now. No, Dragon City is currently doing a massive collaboration with the Walking Dead. Yes, one of the most iconic television shows of all time is collaborating with Dragon City. But how does this collaboration work? What are we looking at here? Well, to celebrate the iconic show's return, we're actually getting characters from The Walking Dead as dragons in Dragon City. We're getting Negan, Maggie, Rick, Carol, Daryl, and Michonne. But what separates these thousands of dragons from each other? Well, each singular dragon possesses its own unique primary element, meaning that every single dragon is completely unique. And on top of that, every single dragon has a thing called a special bunker attack, which gives them extra fighting power, specifically in PvP fights. And I know there's some of you out there like me who enjoy the bad guys more than the good guys, and for you guys, I have surprise. The Negan dragon is already in the game, and the Negan dragon's primary element is happy. However, your opponents aren't going to be feeling so happy because the Negan Dragon can use his baseball bat, Lucille. You can get your Negan, Maggie, Rick, and Carol dragons through the offers or through the breeding islands when they appear in game. And all you have to do to get the Michonne Dragon is to accomplish her quests. And if you get all five Walking Dead dragons, then you get the Daryl Dragon for free. Getting these dragons is an absolute breeze. All you have to do to get Negan, Maggie, Rick, and Carol is to download Dragon City using the link in my description or my pinned comment. And on top of the chance of getting these four dragons, you will also get 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and an epic nature zombie dragon. So what are you guys waiting for? Download Dragon City and get to building your own dragon empire today. So I know what you're saying. You're reeling over the fact that I just told you that there was a fifth great shinobi world's war and you've never heard of it. Well, that's because by and large, the average Naruto consumer doesn't read the light novels. Unfortunately for us who do read the light novels, they do an incredible job of painting the world of Naruto and filling in time gaps. But before we get to talking about the fifth great shinobi world's war, we have to talk about what built up to said fifth great shinobi world's war. So let's start these videos off in the way that we usually start these videos off at the beginning. You see, the time period we're talking about exists within the Boruto timeline, specifically after the events of the Momoshiki invasion. That is to say, after Boruto's shooting exams when all of the Kage, Sasuke, and Boruto fight against Momoshiki and eventually kill him. You see, the events I'm going to tell you about today come from Shikamaru Shinden. Therefore, all the events we know about this fifth great shinobi world's war come from the perspective of Shikamaru. Our story opens with Shikamaru waking up after a night of drinking and smoking. Yes, Shikamaru smokes now. 
now. But Chikamaru realizes upon waking that he never took off the clothes he was drinking in, never took the bath that Tamari set for him, or ate the dinner that she left for him. So he knew Tamari would be pissed with him. So when Chikamaru descends down the stairs after taking a bath and brushing his teeth, he finds Tamari in the kitchen and he tries to make small talk with her. It's at that point that Tamari reminds Chikamaru that the day that Chikamaru went out drinking and smoking was actually their wedding anniversary. Chikamaru apologizes profusely, but has to cut his apology short because, well, He's late for work, and his busyness at work is the reason he cited for forgetting their wedding anniversary. But the thing that Shikamaru was late to is the Five Kage Summit that occurred after the Momushiki invasion. And it's at this Five Kage Summit that Naruto thanks all the other Kage for their help against Momushiki. And while most of the other Kage are happy to have helped, Korosuchi, the Suche Kage who replaced the Noki, Onoki's granddaughter, is upset with Naruto. Most of Korosuchi is upset that Konoha continues to have these catastrophic events. Which like, how is Konoha gonna control whether or not an alien comes down to the planet but go off queen but more than momushiki korotsuchi is actually upset that konoha has been developing shinobi wear you see obviously the tuning exams bring all of the kage because all of the kage come to see their genin and try to become chuni however within the tuning exams boruto had been using the shinobi gauntlet you know the gauntlet that shoots out a little pill that allows you to create any jutsu and while naruto thought the korotsuchi was upset that his son had cheated in the tuning exams what korotsuchi was actually upset about was the fact that konoha was creating the shinobi wear in the first place without any of the other kage's knowledge. You see, Korotsuchi was upset about the fact that Konoha was essentially making military advancements without informing any of their allies. And while Darui, the Rai Kage, wasn't upset about this, probably because he was creating planet-busting cannons without anybody else knowing in the last, Jojo, the current Mizukage, agreed with Korotsuchi stating that essentially Konoha, who was already a very powerful nation, having things like shinobi gauntlets, put the rest of the villages at a very large military disadvantage. And it's at this point, Gara, being the Naruto simp that he is, reminds everybody that they're all allies and military disadvantage shouldn't matter. But it's at this point that Korotsuchi reminds everybody that Sasuke, who was once a criminal, is out exploring the entire world, essentially spying on everybody and reporting back to Konoha. And it's at this point that Shikamaru tries to remind Korotsuchi that Konoha were quite literally the people who created the Shinobi Union, which is the allyship. What Shikamaru didn't mention, and what I would have mentioned, which makes Shikamaru a much better person than me, though, is the fact that the Hidden Stone joined the Shinobi Union with the idea of destroying it from the inside out and then picking up all the broken pieces after the Fourth Great Shinobi World War until Inoki was convinced of otherwise, but that's just me. Sorry, costume change, black shirts wash me out. However, not yielding to the reason of Shikamaru or the show of allyship from Gara, Koritsuchi states that unless Konoha divulges all of its covert secrets, Iwa will pull out of the Shinobi Union. And honestly, I do kind of understand where Koritsuchi's coming from here. Konoha is already the strongest village on earth. If you heard that during times of peace, they were developing the ability to give anybody, ninja or not, the ability to use jutsus like the Rasengan, well, I would also be a little perturbed. Korotsuchi tells Naruto that they have until the next five Kage Summit to divulge all of their secret intel, mostly as it pertains to the development of weapons. After this meeting, Shikamaru meets with two Anbu members. Shikamaru tells these two Anbu members, which he has a relationship with, Korotsuchi's demands. However, the three of them can't really understand Korotsuchi's demands. See, all three of them know that the Hidden Stone was there during the Fourth Great Shinobi World War and during Momoshiki's invasion, and therefore that Korotsuchi should understand that Konoha has no interest in invading anybody else. So they deduce that Korotsuchi must be trying to pull out of the Shinobi Union for some other reason. However, they don't know why, so Shikamaru sends these two Anbu members to Iwa to spy on Iwa to figure out what the reason is. But Shikamaru's not just going to send some people away to do his job for him. He also decides to go to Iwa to do a little bit of snooping. Shikamaru decides to visit Anoki, who is now an elderly, sort of senile man living on his own. Shikamaru goes to Iwa under the guise of playing Shoji with Anoki. However, while playing Shoji with Anoki, Shikamaru tries to suss out from Anoki why Korotsuchi's trying to pull out of the Shinobi Union. And all Anoki has to say to that question is, Shinobi are Shinobi. And before they can get any further into their conversation, Korotsuchi basically kicks down the door and basically demands to know why Shikamaru is in Iwa. Shikamaru insists that he's just there to play Shoji with Anoki, but she feels as though something else is going on. So it's at this point that Shikamaru decides to remove himself from the situation and leaves Iwa. Upon returning to Konoha, Shikamaru has a pile of paperwork that he has to get to. And as he pours over this pile of paperwork, Moegi, the head of Shikadai, his son's team, comes in to talk to him about Shikadai. Moegi tells Shikamaru that Shikadai had been specifically requested for an S-Class mission. And while Shikamaru contemplates whether or not Shikadai would be ready for an S-Class mission, Moegi cuts him off and states 
that Shikadai had already rejected the mission and would not be convinced otherwise. But neither Shikamaru or Moeki could figure out why Shikadai would reject an S-tier mission like this. I mean, after all, this mission was escorting a small nation's daimyo. So when Shikamaru got home and he asked Shikadai about why he would reject this kind of mission, Shikadai just said, it was a drag. However, Tamari tells Shikamaru the next morning that Shikadai actually rejected the mission because the dignitary, the daimyo, was actually trying to use Shikadai to get close to Shikamaru, which flew Shikamaru into a rage because somebody was trying to use his son to get close to him. Therefore, somebody was trying to exploit his son. And while Shikamaru and Tamari are engaged in this conversation, one of the Anbu members that was sent to Iwa by Shikamaru appears. And it's at this point that the Anbu member relays to Shikamaru that the daimyo of the Land of Earth has actually ordered Iwa to invade the neighboring country the Land of Flowers. See, the Land of Flowers is a small independent nation with fertile soil, perfect for planting crops. I mean, it's called the Land of Flowers. And this is where problems start to arise. You see, Shikamaru wonders why the Hidden Stone would try to invade a country in the Land of Flowers that they have a trade agreement with. But then Shikamaru begins to wonder why would Iwa trade with a country they could so easily conquer? And it's at that point that he realizes that the Land of Flowers is actually allied with the Land of Lightning, specifically the village hidden in the clouds. Therefore, if Iwa were to invade the Land of Flowers, the village hidden in the clouds would have to come to the Land of Flowers defense, which would start a war between the village hidden in the stone and the village hidden in the clouds. However, there's one big problem with that. The Shinobi Union specifically states any hidden village associated with the Shinobi Union cannot come into conflict with each other. Therefore, Korotsuchi made an unreasonable demand of Konoha, which she thought Konoha would never in a million years approve of, and therefore would give her a reason to leave the Shinobi Union and then be clear to invade the Land of Flowers. It's at this point that Shikamaru realizes what Anoki told him. Well, it might have seemed simple. Basically, what Anoki was saying when he said Shinobi are Shinobi, Shinobi is that shinobi in a country always have to listen to their country because the hierarchy of power within the naruto universe has the kage and then the daimyo the kage of a respective village is in charge of that the respective village however that respective village exists within a country the land of earth the land of fire the land of wind the land of lightning and those lands or those countries are run by the daimyo therefore when anoki said shinobi are shinobi he was stating that a shinobi always has to listen to the call of its leaders and there Therefore, if the daimyo of the Land of Earth says that you have to invade the Land of Flowers, a shinobi has to do that. Coming to this realization, Shikamaru then has to go to Naruto, explaining the entire situation to him. Upon hearing the situation, Naruto is upset with Korotsuchi for not reaching out to him for help. And Shikamaru and Naruto come to the conclusion that if war happens over this conflict, peace will never be found again. And Naruto wants more than anything for his children to be raised in an era of peace. So Naruto and Shikamaru both come to the conclusion that it's best to talk to Korotsuchi and see if they can get her to back out of this invasion. Because if Korotsuchi backs out of this invasion, the Land of Earth's daimyo will have no army with which to invade. But since it's another five Kage summit looming, Shikamaru and Naruto decide that the best time to talk to Korotsuchi will be at that. However, they fear that other villages will side with Korotsuchi like the Hidden Mist, because the Hidden Mist is heavily reliant on the Hidden Stone for the gathering of essential minerals. Where are the island countries gonna get iron? Kinda makes sense. However, the Five Kage Summit doesn't go great. Immediately, Korotsuchi demands Naruto's answer whether or not he will divulge all of the covert information that they have. And it's at this point that Naruto brings up the fact that Korotsuchi is planning on invading the Land of Flowers, which kind of proves Korotsuchi's point that Konoha is collecting covert information on all the other villages and Korotsuchi brings that up. However, Darui, the Raikage, realizing what an invasion in the Land of Flowers would mean, gets furious with Korotsuchi. However, Korotsuchi kind of ignores Darui and shifts all the blame onto Konoha. And Naruto tries to ease the situation by stating that even with all of his power and Konoha's power, he would only ever use that power to make sure that peace persisted. But while Naruto was trying to ease the situation, Jojuro the Mizukage interjects and states that a world with no war doesn't need Shinobi, which confirms Shikadai's earlier suspicion that the Hidden Mist would side with the Hidden Stone. However, this flies Shikamaru into a rage and he uses Shadow Possession Binding Technique on all five Kage simultaneously. And it's at this point that he states that he will kill Chojuro and Korotsuchi if they do not back off the warpath. Yes, you're hearing me correctly. Shikamaru was able to hold all five Kage simultaneously with his Shadow Binding Technique. Garo, well bound, states that killing them will do nothing. To which Shikamaru responds by saying, if Konoha shows that it's so opposed to war that it would kill two Kage, that will show that their power is too much to oppose and that peace will always stay as long as the strength 
strongest power wants it that way. That is to say that essentially Shikamaru was trying to make the point that if you try to start war, we'll kill you before you get the chance, which is war-like. However, it's at this point that Naruto is able to break out of the shadow binding technique because he was a Jinjuriki at the time. Gara uses his sand to attack Shikamaru, which allows him to break out of the shadow binding technique. But I fully believe in that moment, Shikamaru probably could have killed Korotsuchi and Jodro. And it's at this point that Naruto has to detain Shikamaru and apologize to everyone for the attack. But the rest of the Kage were like, that wasn't chill and just kind of leave. But this was a clear act of aggression and Naruto is very upset with Shikamaru. As they return to Konoha, Naruto yells at Shikamaru how he's stoking the flames of war. But Shikamaru actually becomes even angrier with Naruto stating that his actions breaking out of the shadow binding technique undermined Konoha's ability to stop the war. And upon returning to Konoha, Shikamaru received continual updates from his two Anbu members, stating that Iwa had completed all preparations they needed to go to war. Over Naruto, knowing that diplomacy was probably the best way to get out of the situation, called up the Fire Daimyo. And it was at this point that Naruto requested of the Fire Daimyo to reach out to the Earth Daimyo to stop the invasion. There's also like a whole plot line about the Fire Daimyo's kid getting kidnapped and then Shikamaru being like, don't don't save the kid just yet let the kid get kidnapped so we can save the kids so the fire daimyo owes us a favor but it's long and they cover it in boruto so moving on but nothing comes of the fire daimyo reaching out to the earth daimyo so shikamaru and naruto go to his mansion once again and they plead with the fire daimyo to reach out to the earth daimyo once again fire daimyo then assures them that he reaching out to the earth daimyo probably isn't going to do anything and it's at this point that the three of them come up with the idea to call a five country summit now a five country summit is like a five kage summit except the daimyo go as well smash cut to a couple of weeks down the line the five country summit has started and it's taking place in the land of iron the land of iron is like switzerland for naruto it's a neutral place where everyone meets and as the five nation summits start the fire daimyo pleads with the earth daimyo to reconsider the earth daimyo states that an alliance between ninja villages does not mean that the countries are aligned and at this point the tekken the daimyo of the land of lightning interjects and states that this probably isn't a good enough reason to start a war that being the invasion of the land of flowers or fertile ground conversation stall and the fire daimyo calls for a break during which he meets with shikamaru and naruto iku the fire daimyo shikamaru and naruto talk about ways to smooth things over with the other nations and at this point the naruto suggests that konoha hands over all their secret intel to korotsuchi to make her pull out of the war however iku states that now that the daimyo are involved it has to be something more substantial and it's at that point that iku reveals that during the third great shinobi world's war konoha took some of the land of flowers land and that for a long time iku has felt very uncomfortable about having that land and therefore he proposes handing that land over to the land of earth since the land of earth is looking for fertile ground and he believes the inhabitants of that area will be more comfortable in the land of earth but chikamaru is afraid that giving up lands will look like a defeat but Iko assures him that he doesn't really give a shit so when the meeting reconvenes Iko proposes this idea to the other daimyo and donjo states that it's not going to be enough i've already invested too much money in this upcoming invasion but since now that this conversation has come to a stall the daimyo recommend a con continental summit which is a bit like a five great country summit except every single daimyo from every little country is also there but the land of stones daimyo doesn't like this idea so iku the land of fires daimyo gives him another idea war between the land of fire and the land of stone and would you believe it or not the land of earth daimyo relented didn't want to lose for the fourth straight time on their way home from the daimyo summit shikamaru is upset and he's out by himself walking in the mountains of konoha it's at this point that he wraps his shadow around around a tree and tries to crush it. However, he finds he can't crush the tree, making him realize that he was incredibly rusty and thinking that he most likely wouldn't have been able to kill Korosuchi or Chojuro. Because at this point, the Sasuke pulls up on him and he tells him that the Hidden Cloud is also preparing for war. This news makes Shikamaru feel useless as he's afraid that war is almost inevitable. However, Sasuke assures him that by him playing the diplomacy role, he allows Naruto to be Hokage. And by allowing Naruto to be just himself and not bogged down in the intricacies of diplomacy, he's allowing this war to possibly be avoided. It's at this point that Shikamaru and Sasuke get into a battle of telling each other that they're more important to Naruto than themselves until eventually they kiss. Just kidding. I mean, like, I wish, but they just separate, both feeling better about their respective roles. Smash cut to the Continental Summit, which is said to be attended by hundreds of people. So, like, all of the daimyo from small countries, the five major daimyo, the five kage, and then I'm assuming just a bunch of people protected. All of those people. And basically, the reason all of them are there is to vote on whether or not this invasion is approved or not. So, if the majority say, yeah, go ahead and do it, then they get to invade the land of flowers if the majority say don't they don't get to do it it's an interesting way to approach war but when there's a guy who put a literal god in a moon making the rules 
you listen to him. Mifune, the head of the Land of Iron and this summit's chairman, opens up the summit by telling the Earth Daimyo to say his piece. Danjo, the Earth Daimyo, states that shinobis are basically tools and these tools were built for war. And now that these tools were not being used, they were getting rusty, and the entirety of the infrastructure built on Shinobi life was crumbling. Therefore, this invasion into the Land of Flowers and the subsequent war that would come from it would return Shinobis back to their usefulness. And Danjo states, with the presence of things like the Otsutsuki, useless Shinobi would mean the Earth's demise. However, Danjo's speech is followed by Ikus, the Fire Daimyo, who state that Shinobi serve a much greater purpose than that of just war, stating that Shinobi had built the hidden village, that shinobi had made this continental summit and while yes technically conflicts of the past had created the war they're in today but shinobi were actively fighting right now for peace and after iku naruto steps to the podium and as naruto steps to the podium shikamaru steps outside for a smoke mirai sarutobi who's in attendance reprimands shikamaru for doing this however shikamaru tells mirai that naruto's speech can only result and one conclusion. That one conclusion being peace. You see a large theme of this light novel is trust. Trust between Shikamaru and Naruto. Trust between Shikamaru and Tamari. Trust between Shikamaru and Shikadai. Shikamaru wants to trust those around him to operate at their highest level of efficiency. And therefore, Shikamaru wants that trust in return. Shikamaru realized during his conversation with Sasuke that his role is to make sure that Naruto is heard by as many as possible. And by Shikamaru making the Continent Summit happen and allowing Naruto to step onto the stage, he had already done his job. And while Naruto might have disagreed with some of the things that Shikamaru did, like sending Anbu to Iwa, Shikamaru needed Naruto to trust his ability to create the situation for Naruto to speak. And it's during this speech that Naruto states that shinobi are no different from your average person. They want their children to grow up in a world without complications or war. And while it's true that shinobi have always fought, shinobi for thousands of years have fought to end the fighting, and that a shinobi's worth is not identified through the battles they've fought, but by the knowledge and abilities they've picked up while fighting. But remember what I said about trust? Trust between villages is also very important. And while Naruto is talking about knowledge and abilities, he realizes that he should have trusted the information of shinobiware to all other villages. And therefore, during his speech, he reveals that he will be sharing all of the covert information gathered within Konoha about Shinobi Ware with everyone, essentially stating that Naruto will attempt to fix the power imbalance that has been created within Konoha, trying to make all villages powerful on an equal scale and thus rising everybody. You know what they say, a rising tide, raises all boats. And Naruto's speech is broadcast all throughout the world, specifically in Konoha, where Shikadai and Tamari are watching. And as they both watch Naruto's speech, they see Shikamaru's influences, which make them realize that while Shikamaru is unimpressive in the house, he has an incredible heart and he's thriving for peace. And he truly is the reason that peace is being achieved. Naruto ends his speech and is met with roarous applause. And it's at this point that Shikamaru returns to inside. And after Naruto, every single daimyo takes the podium and agrees with Naruto, until eventually Korotsuchi takes the podium. Korotsuchi accepts Naruto's offer of the covert information, which all but guarantees that Iwa will not be involved in the invasion of the Land of Flowers. And since the Earth Daimyo no longer has an army, that means there will be no invasion. And it's at this point that the Earth Daimyo is forced to accept the offer of land from the Land of Fire. And after the summit is closed, Korotsuchi seeks out Shikamaru and Naruto, apologizing for her words in previous Kage summits. But Naruto assures her that if Donjo ever tries to exploit Iwa again, that he can reach out to her in order to fight back against him. And after Korotsuchi left, Shikamaru and Naruto return to Konoha, where they're soon visited by the Daimyo of the Land of Flowers. And the Daimyo of the Land of Flowers leaves hundreds of flowers for Naruto as thanks for saving them. And Naruto, needing to get rid of all of these flowers, gives an armful to Shikamaru, who hurries home because he's embarrassed about carrying so many flowers. However, when he returns home, he sees Tamari, and Tamari is confused as to why he has so many flowers. However, without Shikamaru saying anything, Tamari comes to the conclusion that this must be Shikamaru's way to apologize for missing their wedding anniversary, so she accepts the flowers. And then she yells at him for not putting his clothes away from the Continental Summit. You see, wars can be fought in all kinds of ways. In the real world, we've seen things like World War One and World War Two, but we've also seen things like the Cold War. Proxy wars fought by supporting different factions with money and guns. We've seen wars fought with intelligence and propaganda. Wars fought over who could make it to the moon first. And every single day, wars are fought diplomatically. Every single day in every governmental 
body, there is laws passed or rejected that could stop and or start wars. And in every single governmental body, there is people trying to either stoke the flames of war or put them out. And that's exactly what the Fifth Great Shinobi World War was, a flame that got put out. But without the brains of Shikamaru or the likability of Naruto, those flames would have turned into a bonfire. Because if the Land of Stone invaded the Land of Flowers, the Land of Lightning would have had to move against them. And upon this happening, the Hidden Mist would have supported the Hidden Stone and most likely attacked the Hidden Lightning. However, the Hidden Leaf looking for peace probably would have sided with the Hidden Lightning. And the Hidden Sand being a neutral country probably would have stayed out of it. But this would have resulted in a four country world war, which the Hidden Lightning and Hidden Leaf would have won but it still would have resulted in tens of thousands of deaths over a small plot of fertile land which seems small but truly is there ever a big enough reason for tens of thousands of people to die and that's all guys that's everything you need to know about the fifth great shinobi world war did you guys like this opportunity to learn a little bit more about my editor's favorite character if you guys did please tell me in the comments below and while you guys are down there please for me like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And guys, make sure you remember to download Dragon City using the link in my pinned comment or my description. And I'll see you out there building your very own Dragon Empire. Listen, I'm not saying that I need Audible to reach out to me so I can do an audio recording of every single Naruto Light novel so people can just listen to it as opposed to reading it, but I wouldn't complain.